opposite of multiculturalism is culturism, the adjectival form being culturist. Culturist philosophy argues that the traditional majority cultures have a right to protect and promote themselves domestically. The Korean language itself already has a term to representing its traditional majority culture, minjok. This paper will use the term culturism when speaking against multiculturalism generally and minjok when specifically referring to Korea's traditional majority culture and maintaining it. Foreigners are only 3% of Korea's population. This is a very low amount. Furthermore, this off-sided figure is greatly exaggerated since about one half million of Korea's foreign workers are Chosunjo, ethnically Korean, uh, though raised abroad. Nearly all Chosunjo speak Korean fluently, though with an accent. If Korea rejects multiculturalism, the Chosun joke will become fully integrated within a generation. That noted, Korea is still about 98% Korean. Hi guys, come on in. Yeah, good to see you. Um, in 2005, Korea's president Noh proclaimed, moving towards multicultural and a multiracial society is a general trend we cannot go against. But even the most optimistic books on multiculturalism see it as a strategy to manage the many hard potential and actual effects of ethnic diversity within a country. Korea should drastically lower its immigration numbers and thereby reduce the need for multiculturalism. Korea should say no to multiculturalism. Korea should stay culturist. The foreign population in Korea is very small. Korea still has a choice. Multicultural philosophy. Multiculturalism is an idea that started in Western nations in the 1970s. Having such a long history in the West, its theories and implications have been most fully realized there. And so here in Western examples and theorists will often be used to illustrate multiculturalism's character and negative potential. Multiculturalism seeks to overcome cultural discrimination and, and to, as one Korean multicultural conference put it, embrace cultural diversity. Thus, we can no longer judge cultures. And this is only one manifestation of multiculturalism's failure to take cultural diversity seriously. In Korea, minority students' dropout rate is 10 to 20 times higher than most Korean students. Multiculturalists attribute this achievement gap to the discriminatory attitudes of the Korean majority, to their failure to fully embrace diversity. Multiculturalists therein dismiss the possibility that cultural diversity itself could impact educational achievement. Culturists, on the other hand, take cultural diversity seriously. They note that the Filipino culture, for example, does not value education as highly as the Korean culture. Korean's mother, Korean mothers and students' intense focus on education explains their superior performance. Culturists acknowledge that cultural diversity includes both positive and negative traits. When cultures note that cultural diversity includes problematic practices, multiculturalists call them racist. By noting cultural, but noting cultural diversity and including it in policy formation is not irrational racism, it's rational culturism. When multiculturalists can find no extent racism on which to blame group differences in educational and economic achievement, they blame different outcomes on the impact of historical racism. They do so under the slogan of social justice. Within this term, the, the, the term justice implies that there has been an injustice, and the term social indicates that it's been against groups. These calls for social justice fuel anger at and shame in the traditional majority culture. But Korea has no history of discriminating against the minority ethnic group. This means the argument for social justice does not apply in Korea. The idea of denouncing Korean privilege the analog of Western multicultural's fight against white privilege does not apply here. Yet, those importing the West's multicultural model still insist that Koreans also import the resentment-inducing multicultural philosophy of social justice. Yet, one need not invoke differences in achievement for multiculturals to call you racist. Under multiculturalism, this is not a Korean nation. It's a neutral space where various wonderful groups happen to meet. Therefore, if you say that this is a Korean nation where government work and schooling should be in Korean and primarily promote Korea's greatness, you get deemed a racist. And Korea must choose between multiculturalism and the minjong. 
because the combination of high immigration and multiculturalism will undermine Korea's sovereignty. In areas with many foreign peoples, lawmakers will be elected who champion open borders for their co-national constituents. Uh, Jasmine Lee, she's your first foreign-born legislator. She's for legalizing the offspring of illegals in Korea. And when several Korean lawmakers advocate an open border policy, lawmakers will find it harder to get votes for border control laws. As the number of immigrants grow, so will the politicians' fear of discussing border enforcement. Eventually, no presidential candidate will be able to advocate border enforcement and get elected. And if this previous paragraph I just read sounds a little unrealistic, please know that in the mid-1960s, people of European ancestry comprised 85% of the United States population. It now stands at 64%. And by 2020, white births are projected to be a minority in the United States. And of course, this happened in this 50-year transformation happened in a substantially more populous nation than Korea. In the following section, we will look at policies aimed at minimizing the problems that immigration and multiculturalism can bring. In order to prevent foreign enclaves, foreign areas on Korean soil, the government services such as postal services, licensing, and schools, schools should still continue to be conducted in Korean. This will encourage immigrants to learn Korean. If you adopt the multicultural policy of having services in multiple languages, there will be areas in which Koreans who do not speak the local foreign language will not be able to be hired. This will mean that de facto Koreans are barred from working in such places. This de facto banning of Koreans from employment will spread to other employment sectors and segregate regions. Edu education. Korean children must be taught that Korea is a great nation. One multicultural journal article promoting multiculturalism in Korea recommends that South Korea teach, quote unquote, multicultural family children about how they are being oppressed and how power and privilege within the dominant society work against them, end quote. When such views come to dominate education schools, these, these multicultural views, all other views will be deemed racist. Then, as has already happened in the United States, if teachers want to have a successful teaching career in Korea, they will need to embrace the multicultural social justice agenda. Children will no longer encounter proud, culturist Korean teachers. Multiculturalism tells multicultural students that they're victims of Korea's racist intolerance. If it thereby excuses their poor performance and makes them resentful of Korea's success. A culturist orientation notes that Koreans are proud, tough competitors and asks all students, to consider what behaviors they can change to compete. If language limits prevent immigrant students from competing, they must know that this is a cost of their parents immigrating to Korea. It's not Korea's fault. And that the next generation will speak Korean perfectly and with very, very hard work, succeed. Population. Korea was given the moniker Hermit Kingdom for a good reason. For centuries, Korea maintained a rigid policy of keeping aliens from its shores. Now, no one would argue for entirely returning to Korea's ancestral law of non-intercourse. Korea must trade globally and must therefore host some international business leaders, professors, and scientists. But to forestall the widespread achievement gaps, resentment, and erosion of sovereignty that multiculturalism can induce, Korea must reverse the rising tide of immigration. Now, many people say this is impossible due to Korea's low birth rate. Korea's median age is 47, and the average Korean woman is only having 1.19 children. But history provides a comforting perspective on this demographic situation. Korea currently has 50 million people. In, 1940, in 1949, Korea had just over 20 million people, and it did just fine. Foreign repatriation and a potential rebound of fertility, as well as the nearly inevitable reunification with North Korea, will likely bolster the number of Koreans. But if Korea contracted to say 35 million people, what would be so horrible? According to Bloomberg, Korea will be short 2.8 million workers by 2030. And as a result, the annual GDP could decline by 1.9% annually. The only solution we are told is having Korea import millions of young people from other nations. This strategy will give Korea a slightly stronger economy on the surface. However, Korea will no longer be a nation of Koreans. 
Freedom must choose if it wants the Minjo or to replace its population to possibly bolster the economy. Others say that emerging global economic, the emerging global economy requires open borders. But actually, though promoted as a global trend, the immigration that fuels di diversity has actually only been to North America and Western Europe. Open borders and multiculturalism are not a global trend, they are a Western trend. Furthermore, their association with economic success is illusory. Neither China nor Japan are multicultural, and their economies have global reaches. Korea's economic miracle happened during a time of near cultural homogeneity. Rather than a hindrance to globalism, one Korean author tells us, the min joke seems to have been a prerequisite for Korea's rise to global prominence. Industrialists and small factory owners will recoil at returning to Korea's history of restricted immigration. Individual factory owners' immigration policies have too often determined Korea's national immigration policy. Politicians need to challenge the factory owners' fealty, their loyalty to the Minjo, and ask them to hire Korean workers over foreign workers whenever they are applicants. Businessmen, however, are not the only group that needs to consider the Minjo. The ultimate pressure to adopt multiculturalism comes from the need for workers in the industries designated as 3D, dangerous, dirty, and difficult. Approximately 540,000 foreign workers do 3D jobs in Korea. Yet, Korea has many more unemployed young Koreans than foreign foreigners working in 3D jobs. The problem is not, I repeat, not a labor shortage. It's a cultural problem. Evidence suggests that it's not even a matter of money that keeps Koreans from these jobs, but status. Koreans feel their status is higher when they're unemployed than when doing manual labor. Koreans esteem office worker, not blue collar work. Some of the 3D aversion comes from not wanting to be the only Korean in the workplace. If the workers were once again largely Korean, the Koreans doing such jobs would feel normal. So immigration fuels the problem of needing more immigration. But mostly it comes from a work ethic that needs revising. Koreans must celebrate Chobol leaders such as Hyundai's Chung Chu Yong, who entered the automobile business by running an auto repair shop. This lowly start helped him understand the mechanics of the entire enterprise. Embracing this work ethic does not mean rejecting Korea's young bond emulating test heavy educational regime. regime. It means when hiring, Korean employers should also consider the importance of real world experience. Koreans must also remember the nurses and mine workers that Park Chung Hee sent to Germany to get cash for the nation. Together, these adjustments will help people appreciate the importance of Koreans working 3D jobs to Korea's national uh, success and sovereignty. If Korea does need some immigration, it should carefully choose the immigrants using the cultural cr criterion of cultural compatibility. While very few Asian nations have even signed the 1951 Refugee Act, Korea signed it and gave citizenship to its first refugee in 2010. The country now has nearly 4,000 refugee applications filed. By far, with 437 pending, Pakistanis are the largest group of applicants. Pakistanis come from a militantly Islamic culture rife with sexist oppression, rejection of modern learning, blasphemy enforcement, and terrorism. That statement is not racist. It is culturist. Cultural diversity is real. Incompatibility with Korea's culture is a legitimate reason to refuse Pakistani's asylum requests. In the newly multicultural, racially mixed Western nations, race-based policies would create division and discord. But Korea is still largely unified and made up of Koreans. Therefore, if Korea needs immigrants, its naturalizing laws should retain their preference for Koreans of foreign citizenship, Chosenjo. Within this group, those with Korean language skills should receive preference. Shy of this, Korea should start to strictly enforce its existing cultural laws that limit the numbers of years low-skilled foreigners can reside in Korea. Farmers. International marriages constitute another major source of pressure for mass immigration and multiculturalism. But as of 2012, there are only 200,000 foreign brides in Korea. As of 200,012, the number of children from such international marriages stood at just 151,154. This small cohort 
should not be used as a pretext for dismantling Korea's 5,000-year-old Minjok-based identity. Now, totally prohibiting such marriages may unfairly impinge upon the rights of individuals. But, just like with the business owners, individual farmers should not be allowed to make Korea's immigration policy. Currently, local governments determine immigration policy by subsidizing international marriages. This, too, is an inappropriate level at which to make such vital national decisions. Koreans should prohibit the local subsidizing of international marriages and devise a national program as soon as possible. And in the resulting laws, potential chosen joke wives should again get priority over potential non-chosen joke wives. Perhaps chosen joke women who speak Korean should be targeted for recruitment, maybe even receive subsidies from the government. Shy of this, only women that come from cultures that are compatible with Koreas should be eligible. Meanwhile, Korea should continue providing culture services for foreign brides. More than any other service, foreign brides want Korean language classes. Multiculturalists wish to steer these students towards, towards home country cultural maintenance courses. Multiculturalists must allow these foreign bride students and Korea to pursue their culturist assimilation dreams. Conclusion. Pressures for multiculturalism come from many sources, but the pressure for immigration and multiculturalism is not coming from the Korean population writ large. More than half of the Korean population want the government to take stronger measures against illegal immigration. To break this result, multicultural advocacy groups have announced that we need to incorporate the value of multiculturalism into public education curriculum from the primary school level. The need for such a huge systematic re-education program tacitly and cor correctly presupposes a national disposition against immigration and multiculturalism. Koreans don't want it. But multiculturalists insist those who oppo oppose them are intolerant, hateful, and racist. They're determined to reprogram the Korean majority in the name of social justice. But, Major Western leaders have declared multiculturalism a failure. Rather than slander Korean culturists for not embracing the Western ideals of immigration and multiculturalism, we should respectfully offer the Korean nation a choice. Does it wish to keep the culturist laws and traditions that maintain its 5,000-year-old minjo, or trade it in for multiculturalism? It's not too late. We should give the Korean people a choice. Thank you.